Hi and welcome to this Junior Cycle Higher Level Maths Revision video. In this video we're going to be looking at repeating patterns. So as part of that we're going to look at how to identify a repeating pattern. We're going to find the correct shape or colour or number given a term of a repeating pattern and to create repeating pattern patterns from a linear sequence. Here we have a repeating pattern. So we have a square, circle, triangle, rectangle, square, circle, triangle, rectangle, dot, dot, dot means it'll continue in this way forever. Notice how the pattern repeats every four. So we would generally talk about these as terms, but they're in this case shapes. So every four shapes and then it will start the pattern again. Now, when we do this, it's easy to think of it in terms of the term. So we have the first term or the first pattern or the first piece of the pattern is a square. The second is a circle, third is a triangle and so on. It might be easier to understand what we're about to do if we lay this out under each other like this. So it's the same pattern, but we're moving between the lines rather than looking at it on a single line. Now, I'm going to number all these and that's its term number. So for example, the seventh term there is a triangle. The 14th term is a circle and so on. Now, if I wanted to figure out how to get, if for example, if they asked me that, um, say the 20th, so the 20th term, what shape is that? Or the 50th term. So how could we work that out without drawing the repeating pattern all the time? And how we're going to do that is to use the idea that they are in groups of four. So we're going to talk about dividing the term number by four and everything in the first column will have a remainder of one. Second column, remainder of two. Third column, remainder three. And the third one, you might say remainder four, but actually because we're dividing by four, it will be no remainder. So look at this for a second. I'm going to look at the third row. So nine, 10, 11 and 12. If I divide nine by four, it goes in twice with remainder one. 10 divided by four, twice remainder two. 11 divided by four, twice remainder three. And 12 divided by four goes in evenly three times. So what is the 21st shape? So let's use this method. 21 divided by four is going to give us five remainder one. I'm just gonna use or one for remainder one. So we're really going back to maybe something you haven't seen since primary school. Gone are the decimals. We're talking remainders here. Remainder one means we're talking about the first shape, which is a square. Then what is the 37th shape? So let's do the same thing. 37 divided by four. When we do this, we get nine. Again, remainder one. So that shape is a square. Example one. Here's a repeating pattern of colored tiles. So you can see we have a yellow, green, red, red, blue, yellow, green, red, red, blue, and so on. So we can see that it's repeating after each five colors. So the first question is, what is the next color in the pattern? So it ends on a yellow, after the yellow comes green. The second question then says, what color is the 30th tile? So what we're going to do is we're going to label the colors based off the remainders. So yellow will be remainder one, green will be remainder two, the next red will be remainder three, the second red remainder four, and blue will mean no remainder. Remember, when we're doing this sum, we're going to divide by five because this pattern repeats every five. So 30th tile, we do 30 divided by five. It gives us six remainder zero, which tells us that this color is blue. Um, if the color, what color is the 48th tile? So same logic, 48 divided by five. When we do that, we get nine remainder three, which means it will be red. It then says, if the 63rd tile is red, what color is the 65th, 65th tile? Now, if it was any other color, it might be easier to do, but because there is two reds here, it's not going to be hugely helpful. 
However, you might have discovered because we're repeating in fives, anything that ends in a three will represent the three that we have labeled above, which means anything that ends in a five will be linked to this blue non remainder. Now, if that wasn't clear, we could just use the same logic we have been doing, and that is 65 divided by 5. That gives me 13 remainder 0, which tells me it was blue. Part 5. Write down the pattern formed by the blue tiles. So the first blue tile is in space 5, the next one is in space 10, and so on. Because it repeats every 5, what we end up with is a linear sequence which has a common difference of 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. It then asks, in what position is the sixth blue tile? So if they ask for quite a large number, we could use what we know about linear sequences. However, because it's only sixth, we can continue on this pattern. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and the sixth blue tile would be in space 30. Now let's look at another example of a repeating pattern, but this time it's going to come from a linear sequence. So write down the first 10 multiples of 8. So here they are. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72 and 80. This is a linear sequence because we are adding 8 each time. It then says show that the last digits of these multiples form a repeating pattern. So here's what it looks like if I just look at the last digit. 86420. 86420. Okay. After how many digits does the pattern start start repeating? So here's our first five digits. So it repeats every five. Then the final part is what number appears in the hundredth position of the pattern? Now because we aren't dealing with a repeating pattern at the very start, we're dealing with a linear sequence or pattern. Um, if you notice, the formula is going to be the first term is 8, the second term is 16. So actually where it sits, its position, its term number, multiplied by 8 will give me the answer. So the 10th term is 10 by 8, which is 80. So my 100th term is going to be 8 by 100, which is simply 800.